Welcome to Thursday's Thought for Today. This week we will be looking at the story of Hannah from the first two chapters of 1 Samuel. Today we will be considering verses 1 to 11 of chapter 2, where we hear Hannah pray as she leaves her son Samuel with Eli the priest. Hannah's Prayer Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who are full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with the princes and has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's, on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Then Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy ministered before the Lord under Eli the priest. Here we have just read Hannah's prayer as she hands over her longed-for and God-given son Samuel to Eli for a life of service to God in the temple. Hannah's prayer here bears a significant similarity to the Magnificat, Mary's prayer when she discovers that she is going to be mother of Jesus. In this prayer, Hannah acknowledges God's total control of every aspect of creation and life. She knows that he is in control of life and death, of success and failure. God knows all things. He judges all things. His will will be done. No one can prevent him or stand against him. Perhaps it is this deep understanding which enables Hannah to hand over her beloved son to Eli and to return home without him. Hannah has made a promise to God and now she fulfills it. This promise and this action were in line with God's will and plan for her life. They were also in line with God's will and plan for Samuel's life. Indeed, they were in line with God's will and plan for his chosen people, the whole people of Israel. For Samuel would grow up to become a great prophet who would lead Israel for many years. His story is for another day, but we can rest assured that this was God's will for his life. And we often don't understand why things happen the way they do. We often do not know and cannot understand why God allows us to experience difficulties or asks us to take a particular difficult path. But we can be certain 
that he does have a plan for our lives and a plan for the lives of those whom we love. We can trust that his will is good and right and that he is a God of justice and love. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you and thank you that you are the almighty and unchanging God of creation. We thank you that you know all things and control all things. When we face difficulties or walk in challenging paths, help us to continue to walk with you and trust you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And finally, let's finish with the morning collect. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>